So we're going to be talking about braids. A braid is a collection of strands connecting some points to some other points. So here in the picture you can see we've got k points down at the bottom. In this picture k equals 3. And we've got the same k points up at the top. And the braid is the red thing in between the collection of, in this case, three strands that connect the bottom points to the top points. So I'm going to call the different strands gamma 1, gamma 2, all the way up to gamma k. And I want to think of the strands as paths in three-dimensional space depending on a parameter t, a time parameter. So at the bottom we have t equals 0, at the top we have t equals 1. And in between, I want these paths always to be moving upwards. In other words, I'm going to parameterize them in the following way. So I'm introducing coordinates like x, y, and z. So the x, y plane is this disk, and the z direction goes upwards. And in terms of these coordinates, gamma i of t, the path gamma i, is going to be f i of t, comma t. In other words, as t increases, the z coordinate goes upwards. And f of i of t is just telling us how the point moves in the x, y direction as we go up. I need to make sure that my braids don't collide with each other, so I don't want something where the braids actually go through the same point. They're allowed to cross, so one can go behind the other, or vice versa. I can have a crossing, but in terms of uh, coordinates, what I want is fi t is not equal to fj of t if i is not equal to j. So remember, fi is telling us whereabouts the ith path is in the xy plane at time t and fj is telling us where the jth path is at time t and we just don't want them to be at the same point at the same time. So at time 0 the ith strand of our braid starts at the point zi. At time 1, the i strand of our braid ends at the point Zsi for some permutation s of the numbers 1 through k. So in this example, the uh, first strand starts at Z1 and ends at Z3. k is 3 in this example. Uh, the second strand starts at Z2 and ends at Z2. And the third strand starts at Z3 and ends at Z1. So in this case, the permutation s would be the permutation 1, 3. Just switches these two. So there are many, many braids, and they can be very complicated. Uh, we want to make our lives a bit easier, uh, so we're going to introduce a notion of equivalence between braids that will allow us to focus on what really makes two braids different from one another. So here are two braids, a red braid and a blue braid. And if you look closely, you'll see the, the blue braid is really just a small push off of the red braid. I don't really want to consider these to be different braids. They're essentially the same. So I'm going to define a notion of equivalence that makes them the same. So two braids, fi of t, comma t, which is the red one, and gi of t, comma t, which is the blue one, are considered to be equivalent if there are homotopies h, i, s, t, one for each i from 1 up to k, such that at s equals 0, we get the braid f, i, t, so h, i, 0, t is f, i, of t, and at time 1, we get the blue braid h, i, 1 of t is g, i, of t. Right, so as s goes from 0 to 1, we interpolate between the braid f i of t and g i of t. And moreover, all the way along the homotopy, we need h i s of t to be a braid for each s. Right, so for each s, 
H I S of T defines a braid. In other words, we have a path in the space of braids connecting F I T comma T to G I T comma T. The great thing about braids is they form a group. So now I'm going to tell you what the group structure is, and then we're going to see that actually this group, this braid group, is just the fundamental group of some space. So here's how we're going to multiply two braids together. I'm going to take this braid here and I'm going to make it smaller. And then I'm going to take another braid, this blue one, different braid, starting and ending though at the same K point, Z1 up to ZK. And I'm going to move it and sit it on top of the red braid. So the result is a braid that looks like this. Right, I just get this by first going along the red braid and then going along the blue braid, stacking them on top of each other. Okay, so if the red one is called F and the blue one is called G, then the purple one I get by sticking them together is going to be called G Compose F. And as usual with this course, I'm writing the thing that I do first at the end of the expression and then afterwards I'm sticking the G here, just like composition of functions. So you might like to think about why this gives you a group. For example, what is the identity element? What braid would you have to stack on top of any other braid to get the same braid back? Uh, what would an inverse look like? Um, and why would it be associative? Um, so I'll leave it as an exercise for you to think about those things. But what I want to point out is that this looks a lot like the definition of composition in the fundamental group. Because what we did was we took the braid F, we shrunk down the length of time it took to do that by a factor of two, we did the same for G, and then we did F followed by G. And that's exactly like in Pi 1. You speed up the loop to speed 2, and then stack them one after another. So in fact, the braid group, the group of equivalence classes of braids under this group law, is the fundamental group of a certain space. So the space in question is called configuration space, and you should think of it like this. A braid is a path in the configuration space of points in the plane, starting with some configuration Z1, Z2, Z3, etc. And then you let these points move around until they come back to the same configuration of points, possibly with a permutation. That's what's happening as you move up the braid, slice by slice, the points are moving around. So what's this path in? Well, it's a path in the following space. So let O, C, K, which stands for ordered configurations of K points, be the space of k tuples of points in the plane, x1 up to xk, such that xi is not equal to xj whenever i is not equal to j. And let the space of unordered configurations, that is uc, k, be the quotient of the space of ordered configurations by the action of the permutation group that just switches around the different xk's. 
So this is a quotient space by a group action. So a braid is a path in the space of unordered configurations. You start with some collection of points and you move them around. Fortunately, I can only move one at a time. And they come back to the same configuration, but maybe not in the same order. Maybe you've permuted them somehow. So the claim is that the braid group is pi 1 of the unordered configuration space at the base point, which I'm going to call Z. Now this is Z1 up to Zk. Right, this was a particular unordered configuration, so it's a base point in the space of unordered configurations. And actually this is just a matter of working through the definitions, right? So what would a continuous path in this space be? Well, it would be a collection of paths, F1 up to Fk, just as we had for a braid. Homotopies between those paths would be equivalences of braids, and the group law of concatenating paths would give us precisely the group law for braids. So we actually know a fair amount about the braid group. For example, we can give a nice presentation of it in terms of generators and relations. So here's a collection of generators for the braid group. They're the simplest braids you could imagine. They just switch one strand behind the next one and leave all the other strands alone. Right, so this one is called sigma 1. It moves strand 1 behind strand 2. It does nothing to the other strands. This is sigma 2. It moves strand 2 behind strand 3, leaves the other strands alone, etc. So I have k minus 1 of these. The last one looking like this. So these are generators for the break group. That's kind of clear, right? You can imagine you can arrange any braid and slice it so that at each stage there's just one crossing happening between two of the strands. That's what I'm saying about this being a set of generators for the braid group. These generators satisfy some relations, so let me just uh, remove generators. So um, here's one of the relations. Let me take sigma i, which may have more strands than what I'm showing in here. So I'll just draw some dots there. And so that just has one crossing in the ith place. And let me take uh, sigma j. So the condition I want is that the two strands that are involved in the crossing in sigma i are completely different from the two strands that are involved in crossing in sigma j. So when I come down from sigma i to sigma j, I just want to have two straight strands where I had a crossing before, and sigma e going up from sigma j, I just want to have two straight strands. So if I'm in this situation, I can just push one crossing upwards and pull the other crossing downwards, like that. Maybe that's not very convincing, but if you had a piece of string, you can see like I'm just pushing this guy, uh, pushing this crossing down, pushing this crossing up. And I get an equivalent braid. In other words, sigma i, sigma j equals sigma j, sigma i. And when does this happen? Well, this happens with this, um, this condition on the crossings that I mentioned. So what we need is for i and j to be sufficiently far apart. In fact, we need i 
minus j, absolute value, to be at least 2. All right, if j was i plus 1, then this strand here would be the same as this strand here, and we get some interference, so we couldn't just run this trick. The other relation tells us what happens when precisely this condition i minus j big n equal to 2 fails. So uh, let's see if I have sigma i followed by sigma i plus 1, vice versa. I can't just push one of the crossings past the other one anymore. But what turns out to be true in this case is what's called the braid relation and it says sigma i sigma i plus one sigma i equals sigma i plus one sigma i sigma i plus one So you can draw a picture of that and convince yourself that it's true. I'm not going to do it now. But this gives us, in fact, a complete presentation of the braid group. So we have generators sigma 1 up to sigma k. If they're sufficiently far apart, they commute. So that's when i minus j... Uh, so j is bigger than or equal to 2. And if j is i plus 1, then we have instead this braid relation. And the hard part here is, of course, showing that these relations are sufficient for this to be a presentation of the braid group. So we don't need any more relations. So that's called the zariski van Kampen theorem. Uh, I'm not going to explain it now, maybe I'll explain it in a later video. Uh, but for now, that's enough about braids.